Coming up in this video, I will provide a series of new updates from Elon Musk and Drew Baglino on the progress of Tesla's new 4680 battery cells and also the Model Y 2.0. Will the new Model Ys initially produced at Gigafactory Austin and Giga Berlin initially include 2170 batteries and no structural battery pack? Let's dive into the details. In Tesla's most recent investors conference call, it was once again confirmed that Tesla is still expecting to produce the new Model Y 2.0 at least in limited production this year at Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. And of course, while this is not new news, it is always good to have this affirmed once again. As I have mentioned in the past and also as Elon Musk reiterated in the call, the new Model Y 2.0 will look very similar from the outside to the current Model Y, but it will include not only a cast rear underbody like the Model Y is currently being made, but also will include a cast front underbody as well. Of course, these front and rear underbody castings are designed to reduce the complexity of manufacturing, and this is ultimately going to allow Tesla to build a lot more vehicles in a smaller footprint of a factory. However, while the plan is to also include a structural battery pack with the 4680 battery cells and the new Model Y 2.0, in case of technical manufacturing delays, which now seem likely with the 4680 batteries, Tesla has a backup plan that may at first include 2170 cells in a non-structural pack in the new Model Y. So I guess if this does indeed happen, I guess we can refer to this version as the Model Y 1.5. Here's how Elon Musk described Tesla's plans in the Q2 2021 conference call. We're also aiming to do a structural pack with 4680s cells, um, which is a mass reduction and a cost reduction. But we're not counting on that as the only way to make things work. We have uh, some backup plan with a non-structural pack and um, 2170s essentially. Now with these comments from Elon Musk, this does bring up the question, why is there a backup plan? Are there delays with the 4680 battery cell production? While Elon and Drew remain confident in the viability and future mass production of the 4680 battery cells, they did mention some technical manufacturing challenges they still need to overcome. Elon Musk even elaborated in further detail on one of the issues they are having in manufacturing the new battery cathode. Here's what Elon had to say. And, uh... You know, not, not to get too much into the weeds of things, but right now we have a challenge with um, basically the what's called calendaring or, or basically squashing the cathode material to a a, um, a particular height. So it just goes through these rollers and gets and gets squashed like like pizza dough, basically, <laughs> uh, and but very hard pizza dough, um, and the. It, it's causing, it's, it's denting the calendar rolls. Um, this is not something that, that happened when the calendar rolls were smaller, but it is happening when the calendar rolls were bigger. <laughs> so just like, uh, we're like, okay, we weren't expecting that. Besides the issue that Elon Musk elaborated on, according to some comments from Drew Baglino, there are a few other technical issues that he also referred to, and here's what he had to say. In the facility at Cato, over 90% of the, the like processes have demonstrated rate there, but we are limited by the unlucky few that have not, and that's what we're working on. Uh, one of them that Elon mentioned was um, running the, the full-scale uh, cathode calendar. Uh, we're, we're working through some uh, improvements that we need to make to that equipment and to the, the actual raw material itself. To, to not have those limitations. But again, it's an engineering problem. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Elon also mentioned that because of these technical difficulties in manufacturing that they're finding right now, they're going to have to modify the cell production machines that they ordered for Gigafactory Austin and Gigafactory Berlin, which of course will delay production a little bit. Thankfully though, Elon and Drew still appear confident that they can hit an annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours of battery production sometime in 2022. Here's what they had to say on this topic. Uh, I mean, Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, we think most likely uh, we will hit an annualized rate uh, of 100 gigawatt hours a year sometime next year. 
We'll have all the equipment installed yeah. to accomplish uh, 100 gigawatt hours, and it's, it's possible yeah. uh, that by the end of the year, we will be at an annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours by yeah. the end of the year. I mean, my guess is more likely than not, about 50% of, of reaching 100 gigawatt hours a year by the end of next year on an annualized rate, something like that. Yep. Notice that Elon and Drew referred to an annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours of battery production per year, not 100 gigawatt hours of batteries produced in 2022. These two words, annualized rate, are really important to understand because an annualized rate is quite a bit different than actually producing 100 gigawatt hours in a single calendar year. Like any new manufacturing process, there is a ramp up. In the beginning, when you're working out the bugs, training employees, and perfecting the manufacturing processes, the production begins slow at first and then builds. Once the processes are all perfected, the production ramp begins to increase and begins to approach the installed capacity. For example, hypothetically, Tesla could produce 10 gigawatt hours of battery cells in the first three months of 2022 or Q1 2022, and this would be an annualized rate of 40 gigawatt hours. They could then produce 15 gigawatt hours in Q2 of 2022, which would be an annualized rate of 60 gigawatt hours, then produce 20 gigawatt hours of battery cells in Q3 of 2022, which would be an annualized rate of 80 gigawatt hours, and then in Q4 of 2022, they could hypothetically produce 25 gigawatt hours of battery cells, which would meet that annualized rate of 100 gigawatt hours. If you add up the total amount of batteries produced in my hypothetical example, this would represent producing 70 gigawatt hours of batteries and would still achieve a 100 gigawatt hour run rate in the last quarter of the year, even though the total batteries produced did not equal 100 gigawatt hours. However, it is important to note that once that annualized rate is achieved, that should be sustainable going forward and Tesla can build upon this. So even if they don't actually produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2022 of these new 4680 battery cells, in 2023, and on, they should be able to produce at least 100 gigawatt hours of batteries if they achieve that rate that they're shooting for. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please remember to click that like button. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Now, I think it is really important that with any company, especially Tesla, that you don't get caught up into all the little details of the quarterly updates and some of the slight delays that they might have with manufacturing a product. With a long-term view, these small little hiccups become just teeny little bumps in the history of Tesla. In the end, it really doesn't matter if there's a slight delay in the speed of a battery production ramp. After all, take a look at the Model 3 production ramp. Yes, progress was slow in producing Model 3s from 2017 to 2018, and Tesla had a lot of struggles but this is behind us now and Tesla is producing Model 3s and even Model Ys at a breakneck pace. It's no secret that Tesla has a lot riding on the success of the 4680 batteries. In fact, the semi only seems possible and practical with 4680 batteries and the Cybertruck in order to meet the specs and the price that they've laid out needs the 4680 batteries. However, despite some of the delays that Tesla will likely have, I don't see any reason to doubt the viability of the 4680 batteries or the structural battery pack or to doubt that we will see these batteries soon make their way into the new Model Y 2.0. Because as Drew Baglino reiterated, it's not it's not a like science problem, it's an engineering problem. It's yeah, not a question yeah. of if, it's a question of when, and the yeah. team is 100% focused on, on resolving these limiting processes as quickly as possible. Exactly. So this is not a science problem, this is an engineering problem. And with the knowledge that we have that Tesla has some of the smartest and best engineers in the world on their team working on this problem, this gives me a lot of confidence that Tesla will overcome these technical challenges and will soon be on track with their goals. I also think it's really important to point out that the problems that Tesla is apparently having are related to manufacturing, mass manufacturing, and these problems are not actually related to the technology in the battery cells themselves. 
Drew Baglino also gave some updates into the important but not crucial dry battery electrode processes that we've heard about in the past. He mentioned, Fundamentally, we're still happy with the, the dry process direction in terms of the factory footprint, complexity, utility consumption, space, uh, and overall complexity simplification. Elon Musk also confirmed that they are indeed working with other battery suppliers, their current battery suppliers, to produce a battery cell in the 4680 form factor. And while this is something that we already knew that Tesla is working with other suppliers to make 4680 format battery cells, Drew Baglino provided further information about this, which does provide some new details. He mentioned, yeah, and towards that end, we're, we are engaging with the suppliers that we've had good partnerships with on 4680 designs to enable that simplification. And, you know, so, so far, so good. You know, they're working on, uh, they're bringing their core competencies to bear on that. We're not mandating, like, what's going on inside, but, but uh, it, it's been a good, good collaboration. We do know that the 4680 batteries will need to be tabless due to the thermal needs of such a large cell. But otherwise, the chemistry that goes inside of the battery cells appears flexible, and it will be interesting to see some of the innovations that other suppliers come up with in their version of the 4680 battery cells. So to wrap all this up, I really don't have any major concerns with the 4680 battery technology. And when it comes to mass producing any new technology, there's always going to be manufacturing issues. Tesla has a proven track record of overcoming manufacturing challenges, much more difficult than this one, and I believe they will solve this one as well. I remain excited about Tesla's future, the 4680 battery technology, and the vehicles that depend on them. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end. I did want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link to the community in the description below. Thank you so much.